Have you ever wondered how drum machines create those amazing beats that you hear in any sound? Well, let me tell you a story. Yesterday, I was using the Lindrum and my son started playing with it. He asked me how do the sounds get into the machine and I tried to explain that the chips store information like real sounds, similar to a USB, like you know, stores like a video, a document or a photo, and he kept having questions and I realized it was a good time to make a video to dig deeper into this topic. So I'm going to be checking out classic machines like the Lindrum, the TR-808, the 909 and more just to explain how this old technology used to store these sounds. A drum machine is an electronic musical instrument that creates drum beats and percussion sounds. But how these machines store and play sounds? When we talk about the brains of a drum machine, we are referring to its internal control system. This system is typically composed of microcontrollers, digital signal processors, called or DSPs, and sometimes analog components. The microcontrollers manage the drum machine's user interface, operate the sequencer, and regulate the drum sounds. They also handle all the essential tasks, from rhythm button presses to triggering sounds in the correct sequence. We also have the digital signal processors, or DSPs, the DSPs are often found in drum machines with sampling capabilities. And these actually process audio signals in real time and can apply effects like reverb, delay, and EQ. And actually this makes them very essential for creating high quality dynamic sounds. Now, analog components like operational amplifiers, OP amps, and voltage control oscillators, BCOs, are also used in many drum machines, especially those with analog synthesis. These components generate and shape the drum sounds, giving them their unique character and timbre. Now, for example, classic drum machines like the TR-808 use analog synthesis to create their iconic sounds. And modern machines might use a combination of analog and digital components for more versatility. And together, these elements form the brains of a drum machine, working to create beats and the rhythms that we like. There is this essential piece, the computer chip. They store and play back the sounds. These sounds are stored uh, and imagine recording your voice on a smartphone. When you play it back, you hear your voice exactly as it's recorded, right? The ROM chips can store digital recordings of real drum sounds. We call it samples. Each sample is a small digital file, just like an MP3 or WAP file on a computer, but even smaller. These samples are stored in the memory of the ROM chip and played back when you press a button on the drum machine. Let's take the Lindrum as an example. The Lindrum was a popular drum machine in the 80s and it used ROM chips to store high quality samples of real drum sounds. These drum samples were recorded in a studio and then stored in the chips inside the drum machine. When you press a button on the Lindrum, the chip will play that stored sound. For example, a crash cymbal sound is very long and complex, which means that it needs more memory to store. In the Lindrum machine, the crash cymbal actually requires multiple ROM chips or larger capacity chips to store the entire sound. And this is because longer sounds need more data to be accurately reproduced compared to shorter sounds like a snare drum or hi-hats. Machines like Lindrum, drum tracks, the Overheim DX and the, D and the DMX also allow for easy chip swapping and that allows you to experiment with different sounds. You can store 808 chips into your drum tracks or your DX or a 909 chips and you have the versatility of different sounds. Let's talk about the TR-808. Unlike the Lindrum, the TR-808 uses analog synthesis to create its sounds. This means it uses electronic circuits to generate sounds rather than playing back recorded samples, like is the case of the Lindrum. Now, these circuits are more complex, involving multiple components to fine-tune the pitch, resonance and decay of each sound. Actually, a fun fact about this machine is that Ikutaro Kakehashi, founder of Roland, he used defective transistors intentionally to achieve the 808 sound. These transistors actually were purchased at a discount due to their imperfections, which contributed to the machine's unique audio characteristics. Actually, Kakehashi's innovation turned what we could have been a flaw into the defiant feature of the TR-808. 
For example, the TR909 used digital samples stored on drum chips for its hi-hats and cymbals, and the rest of the drum sounds were created using analog circuits. And this hybrid approach allowed the TR909 to produce a wide range of sounds. You can say that a ROM chip works like a bookshelf. Short sounds like a snare or like a hi-hat, they are like small books that fit very easily on a shelf. But longer sounds like a crash cymbal are like big books that take up more space. So to fit the crash cymbal on the shelf, you might need a bigger bookshelf or more shelves. And this is a very basic introduction to understand better how sounds work on a vintage ROM machine in case someone like my son comes up with that question or you can even play them this video. Thank you so much for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more nostalgic explorations.